functioning of pubertal physiology is important to uh, properly evaluate and manage the various child suffering from pubertal disorder. Uh, hypothalamic uh, HPG axis plays a crucial role in uh, uh, regulating the onset and progress of the puberty. Three major organs, hypothalamus, pituitary, and gonads, are involved in the initiation, progression, and maintenance of the puberty. Involvement of either of three organs can lead to either delayed or precocious puberty. Precocious puberty due to uh, hypothalamic pituitary disorder is associated with basal LH level more than 0.2 milliunit per liter and appropriate enlargement of testes in accordance with the uh, pub pubertal stage, which is known as central precocious puberty. Whereas precocious puberty due to adrenal or gonadal disorder is characterized by basal LH level less than 0.2 and smaller testes in comparison to the pubertal stage, which is known as peripheral precocious puberty. Delayed puberty due to hypothalamic pituitary gonadal disorder is characterized by basal LH level less than 0.1 milliunit per liter. In some, some cases, it may be associated with anosmia, whereas delayed puberty due to gonadal disorder is associated with high FSS level that is known as hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. Hypergonadotropic hypogonadism is associated with the palm testes. Pubertal, puberty in boys and girls progress systematically through various stages. In girls, puberty progress systematically through various stages. It has to be differentiated. This stage two, it has to be differentiated from lipomastia, particularly in obese girl. Breast development may be asymmetrical in the initial stages, and it may cause parental concern. And asymmetry may persist into up to 30% of the adult uh, female. Onset of growth spurt in female is marked by the breast stage 2, which lasts for two years with a growth velocity of 8 to 10 centimeter per year. Growth potential from uh, breast stage 2 onwards is 20 to 25 centimeter, and it is 8 to 10 centimeter with the onset of. Uh, secondary mound and post menarchal uh, growth is limited to 5 to 8 centimeter and it, it highlights the importance of consideration of pubertal status while determining uh, final height in uh, female. Puberty in female progress systematically with a gap of 2 to 2.5 years between breast stage 2 and breast stage 4. Any deviation from it is a uh, cause of concern. And uh, vaginal bleeding within one year of uh, breast stage two is known as peripheral precocious puberty, or it or it indicate hyperestrogenic state. Pubic hair in female progress systematically through the various stages, and it occurs simultaneously with uh, thalarchy, or it may pro uh, precede it by 50 in 15 percent of the cases. Pubic hair development occurs because of adrenal androgens and ACTH, hence they progress continuously despite suppression of androgens in cases of central precocious puberty by the use of gonadotropins. Various changes are involved in uh, pubertal development in case of female. Ovarian development is the first change which happens in case of uh, puberty as far as internal changes are concerned. Pubertal ovary have multiple cysts that are arranged centrally in comparison to peripheral distribution, which is uh, seen in PCOD. This polycystic ovarian appearance may lead to the uh, multicystic ovary, leading to the false diagnosis or exaggerated diagnosis of PCOD. Uterus is easily detected in the newborn period. Newborn period uh, due to transplacental passage of estradiol. Uterus is very small in the prepubertal period and it can be easily missed on trans abdominal ultrasound. So, trans abdominal ultrasound should be assessed carefully in child or in female child with absent of the uterus, absent of the breast. Uh, pubertal development in boy involves testicular enlargement, pubic and penile hair, hair growth, uh, 
growth spurt and bond mineralization pubertal development in boy is marked by the enlargement of the testes enlargement of the testes up to the 4 ml mark the onset of puberty in the male whereas enlargement of the testes up to the 10 ml indicate growth spurt whereas enlargement of the testes up to the 20 ml indicate advanced growth and it is associated with the voice change Now, specific age should be used while considering or evaluating a patient suffering from puberty because is puberty in female child can be described by onset of thalarchy before the age of 8 years of the age and it can also be described by the onset of the puberty before 8 year of the age and menarche before 9.5 years of the age whereas in boys it can be uh, assessed by the uh, enlargement of the testes before 9 year of age delayed puberty in female can be described by absence of thalarchy or puberty by 13 year of the age or menarche by 15 year of the age whereas absence of the testicular enlargement beyond 14 years of the age in male described as delayed puberty precocious puberty in girls can be uh, associated with either puberty or complete uh, pubertal development isolated puberty without thalarchy suggest adenarchy due to the adrenal disorder or isolated thalarchy without puberty indicates uh, hyperestrogenic state uh, and puberty and thalarchy before the age eight year of the age is described as precocious puberty whereas vaginal bleeding before 9.5 year of the age is known as precocious puberty described by the enlargement of the testes before the nine year of the age however in precocious delayed puberty in female can be described by absence of the thalarchy by 13 year of the age or no menarche after the uh, no menarche within 4 year after the onset of thalarchy is also considered as delayed puberty in female delayed puberty in boy can be described by no testicular enlargement by 14 year stalled puberty is known as where uh, after initial pubertal development there is no subsequent testicular development it is also a type of delayed puberty and it indicates acquired disorder and it is strongly against the diagnosis of cdgt pubertal status in girls can be assessed rapidly with the help of clinical examination supplemented by the simple investigation tool estradiol is very low in the prepubertal period but estradiol level more than 10 pico ml per liter suggest onset of the puberty in female however looking towards significant variability in the estradiol level we have to look for indirect clinical surrogate markers of estrogen exposure for this we can examine the vaginal mucosa pale and pink vaginal mucosa indicates recent estrogen exposure whereas red and glistening mucosa su suggest absence of the estrogen similarly increased vaginal discharge at the uh, breast stage 4 also indicate pubertal onset and it predict uh, menarche within 6 to 8 months puberty in girls is marked by the uh, change in the shape of the uterus from a tubular to a globular structure this is followed by increase in the endometrial thickness up to 3 mm which an endometrial thickness more than 5 mm indicates impending menarche growth and growth and bone age acceleration is also there in case of uh, pubertal status in girls and it is also associated with the abdominal pain because of associated ovulatory function
pubertal status in boy is also assessed with the help of simple clinical examination followed with the help of some basic investigation testosterone level more than 10 nanogram per liter is associated with onset of the puberty pubertal uh, puberty in boy is associated with mild hyper androgenic changes which leads to the change in the body odor and the acne it is also associated with the growth acceleration and the bone age advancement and voice change is associated with the significant Uh, pubertal advancement which indicates limited growth potential fss level in pre pubertal female is higher in comparison to the lh and it may overlap with those seen in the uh, pubertal girls lh level whereas lh level shows 25 fold increase with the onset of the puberty which makes it a reliable marker for the diagnosis of the pubertal onset lh level basal lh level less than 0.1 milli unit per deciliter indicates pre pubertal level whereas more than 3 milli unit per liter indicates pubertal onset they are secreted in the pulsatile fashion hence they emphasize the need for pooled sample who stimulated lh level more than 5 milli unit per liter indicates central precocious puberty whereas less than 5 indicates precocious puberty gnrh stimulation test can be done with the help of injection leuprolide which is given in a dose of 20 microgram per kg and after that uh, lh and fss level is obtained after 2 hours whenever a child comes to us with the complaint of um, pubertal disorder first we have to confirm whether we, we are dealing with pubertal disorder second we have to assess the extent third we have to decide whether we are dealing with the precocious puberty or delayed puberty in case of precocious puberty we have to assess the gonadotropin level low gonadotropin level with precocious puberty indicate peripheral precocious puberty and investigation accordingly whereas high lh level in case of precocious puberty indicates central precocious puberty similarly in case of delayed puberty we have to assess the um, uh, gonadotropin level low gonadotropin level in case of delayed puberty suggest central precocious puberty whereas high gonadotropin level in case of delayed puberty suggest peripheral precocious puberty thank you sir jena Yeah, that's a good. Gonadotropin is not secreted in the pulsatile fashion, and they uh, indicates the need for pooled sample. She is working as the director of agency IDF and director of med classes. She has been working in the field of pediatric uh, gynecology for a long time. Dr. Meena Mohan again was there in short stage. She is again back, and she has been working in PhD in Institute of Medical Sciences, Goimbatore. Dr. Vijay Kumar from Calicut. So we've got a very senior faculty discussing, and we've got a dynamic Dr. Pratik. Will take forward to us with various cases. So, Dr. Pratik, you can start off right away. So, seven-year-old girl came with breast development. Uh, now she was B2, no pubic hair or menses, and her height was 118 centimeters. Her bone age was in fact 6.5 years. And, however, some evaluation was done which showed an LH 0.1, FS 2.2, and estrogen less than 10. So now, first, I would like to ask, ma'am, should she have been evaluated for this? And how would we proceed for the teacher? Sir, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Dr. Vishnu, yeah, please go. Uh, whenever a child present to us with the complaint of uh, thalaki, first of all, we have to confirm the its presence. This is especially relevant in case of obese girl who present with the complaint of large breast development. This can be done with the help of. by putting thumb and index finger around the areola if any resistance is felt it is thalaki otherwise it is uh, lipomastia looking towards normal bone age and the low estrogen level this child does not seem to be suffering from precocious puberty rather it is lipomastia so looking towards the um, low reliability of uh, estrogen level i would like to assess indirect marker of estrogen exposure and i would like to examine the vaginal mucosa if vaginal mucosa is red it indicates 
no estrogen exposure and pink and pale mucosa suggest recent estrogen exposure because uh, vag vaginal mucosa is red bone uh, age is normal and there is no resistance so this child is seems to suffering from lipomastia and this doesn't require any treatment and we can reassure the child i think that's a very common presentation that we are seeing these days obese girls being referred as precocious puberty but they actually had lipomastia so just do a basic palpation of the breast gland no workup is required even before that as dr vishnu has really pointed out very nicely so here we have a two and a two year old girl who came with thilaki now this thilaki had started 6 months uh, which is slowly progressive slowly progressive and however there are no other signs of features or any other further progression so uh, ma'am how would we proceed with this case am i audible yes dr meena please go ahead okay fine so this is a, a six month old baby uh, we just have to find out from the history whether there is any other exposure to estrogen or uh, anything in terms of vaginal discharge or anything so it's just isolated uh, precocious uh, so isolated just breast development which is b3 whereas there's no pubic hair or there's no other signs then obviously you would look at the breast you would make the child lie down and do a breast examination by looking at the child make sure that the child is plotted on the on the growth chart and make sure that there isn't any accelerated growth that is noted so once you have assured that there is only the breast that is there and there is not a lipomastia then we have to confirm whether it is precocity or not so we are looking at again vaginal bleeding and then you would then do a blood investigations here the lh is very much low which is pre pubertal and the fsh is okay and the estrogen is less than 10 picomoles per liter so this is a simple case of thilaki and the ultrasound here showed that just small cyst so this is isolated thilaki but the most important message here is breast development is the first stage of puberty in girls so you just have to continuously keep this child on monitor so that you are not missing a pubertal progression here one very key message from a puberty point of view when you always say the word puberty it has to follow by progression so you need to find out puberty followed by progression whether it is stagnant whether it is regressing or whether it is progressing so the very important key message is puberty is always associated with monitoring and progression because that is the only way you are going to find out whether it is isolated thilarchy or whether it is going to be followed up by the other pubertal components so careful meticulous breast examination and if not it can be um, reinforced with an ultrasound breast also so this is a simple case of isolated thilarchy but we need to have all the important parameters that is going uh, behind our back so that we have a vigilant observation for this child thanks dr meena wonderfully put i think the next case is again very interesting so here is a 6 year old girl who came with breast development now this had started one month back and her height was 124 cm on examination she had uh, breast development uh, stage 3 as well as pubic hair stage 2 and the mucosa was pink so when we plotted the growth chart we found that the height age sorry the bone age was much more advanced about 5 years advanced to the compared to the height so how would we proceed with this case uh, sir dr vijay uh, hello yes yeah, so i think just hello i am audible yes please go ahead so uh, this child almost almost it looks like the a child in the previous case but there are four important points for the differentiation between the simple premature thilaki and a precocious puberty you can just see the four findings you can see the growth chart her height is above 97 cm so that indicate that her pubertal growth spurt has already started that is the most prominent indicator carefully uh, marked growth chart and her height age is height age is 7 years that again tells you her chronological age is 6 year height age is 7 year she is progressing to puberty then you can also see a yellow dot there that is bone age bone age is advanced bone age is around 11 years that also indicates that she is going for puberty and her pubic hair development that is stage 2 he has just started few pubic hairs are there so that is again indicate that she is advancing and see her mucosa that is estrogenization the features of estrogenization is there in her mucosa these four things are enough to tell you that we are not dealing with a case of simple thilaki she is going for precocious puberty how will you work up dr meena 
yes this cell should be worked up and the assessment so you can see that her bone age is advanced so if the bone age is retarded we have to think of hypothyroid that will be discussing later if the bone age is advanced next thing to rule out is whether the child is having a central precocious puberty or peripheral precocious puberty of just to differentiate between that lh the basal lh if it's not advanced we can do a stimulation test as we were discussing in that uh, lecture so if the lh or stimulated lh is high you have to think of a central precocious puberty and then you have to deal with gnrh analog and other therapy after further investigation if you if the lh is suppressed you will be dealing with a case of peripheral precocious puberty like congenital adrenal hyperplasia all these things and we have to investigate so in this case the lh was high and this is typically the central precocious puberty as dr vijay had said so the key message is dr vijay from your side or in this case okay key the here whenever there is child is having a premature breast development and height is little bit advanced always do a very simple investigation cost effective bone age if the bone age is advanced you are dealing with a case of precocious puberty and if the lh is high then you have to think of managing it gnrh analog yeah thank that you that issue of mri to be done or not is we can discuss later yeah so if uh, so just when you put the mri thing so if the age is less than 6 years we advise mri otherwise only if there are neurological features next case dr pratik so a 7 year old girl has, yes sir. okay uh, a 7 year old girl has come with vaginal bleeding and it is only a single isolated episode there is no breast development or any pubic hair development and her vaginal mucosa is red so uh, ma'am uh, how would we investigate this isolated episode of vaginal bleeding um <clears throat> now this 7 year old girl uh, am i audible yes yes please go ahead ha uh, is uh, clearly uh, there are no clinical signs of estrogenization because she is pre pubertal clinically and even her vaginal mucosa is red which means that we are dealing with a non endocrine cause of vaginal bleeding in this case which we call as what we uh, call as the gynecological bleeding it could be a foreign body or tumor or a trauma so it needs to be investigated vaginoscopically and identified for any uh, gynecological cause of bleeding so if we you know if we just uh, try to assess uh, precocious puberty we need to look at two uh, this chart actually is explaining a, a lot about precocious puberty so there are two great features about the pubic hair and the breast development so if there is only pubic hair development which we call as adrenarch is generally uh, uh, sometimes associated with um, uh with obesity and it sometimes it's just premature adrenarche uh, but if uh, a girl has a local cause she will not have any breast development no pubic hair because pubic hair uh, is a completely uh, uh, unrelated to onset of uh, is unrelated to ovarian function it comes from the adrenal functions so uh, definitely absence of pubic hair is a very high clinical sign that this girl is not in puberty especially in hypothyroidism also uh, basically pubic hairs are absent because of the retarded growth so adrenal function um, actually begins once an appropriate amount of growth and development has occurred um and central precocious puberty definitely is the true puberty where you have both the features of uh, pubic hair development and um uh, breast development yeah so uh, so how will you assess now so basically this has got only vaginal bleeding so you want to do a local cause evaluation as dr yutika has said yes local evaluation to look for vulvo vaginitis any foreign body we would wa want to do a vaginoscopy which is a simple technique done under local uh, under anesthesia it's called a no touch technique um so in past we used to do uh, examination under uh, anesthesia which we would use speculums but with the presence of vaginoscopes which are very thin uh, we are able to examine uh, as a short process now so i think this is a big message that no breast uh, no pubic hair think of a gynecological cause refer to a gynecologist and that and that's a big message that's come out from here next case of pratik so here is a 7 year old girl who came with breast development uh the breast development has started 3 months back now you can see the height is very low it is 100 cm 
So on the growth chart also it is proven that the height is very low, however the weight is still not as low. Uh, so next, so here we have a uh, breast development stage three, no pubic hair development, and the mucosa is pink. So sir, how would we proceed with this case, Dr. Vishnu? Uh, this girl of seven years presented to us with the complaint of telarchy of three months. Height of 100 cm at the age of seven years is significantly low in contradiction to the growth advancement seen in case of precocious beauty. So uh, I would like to see uh, or examine this uh, patient for the bone age. What is the bone age? So here. Bonnage was at four years. So, so bonnage is four year. It is strongly against the diagnosis of usual uh, precocious puberty. Delayed bonnage in case of precocious puberty goes strongly in favor of precocious puberty due to hypothyroidism, which can be uh, confirmed in this case by the uh, TSS level, which is high. So it confirms our th diagnosis of. Uh, because of puberty due to hypothyroidism, and this condition is um, classical of hypothyroidism, delayed bone age with precocious puberty. Extremely high TSS level in case of uh, hypothyroidism act on the FSH, FSH receptor and causes uh, ovarian cyst, which is the cause of uh, thalarchy seen in this case. So I think this is a big message that if you have got a retarded bone age, if you have got a delayed bone age and short stature, you should think of hypothyroidism. And if you see in our application, if you just go through, you'll be able to get the diagnosis pretty easily in that regard. So key messages are growth failure with precocious puberty is hypothyroidism. Ovarian cyst in a prepuberty girl, always think of hypothyroidism again. Okay. Next case, Dr. Pratik. So here we have a four-year-old boy. Now this is, a, if we see the clinical picture, for a four-year-old boy, his stretch, his penile length is very well developed, and his, if you can see his testicular from here also appears well developed, and some uh, features of pubic hair is also seen. So, ma'am, how would we proceed with this case of uh, early puberty? Okay, first of all, we should definitely plot this boy's uh, growth parameters on a growth chart, and then you would measure the testicular volume. Uh, with the help of an orchidometer, never estimate, overestimate, under underestimate testicular volume. Always have an orchidometer in hand. And uh, looking at just the testicular volume can give very good clues as to where the puberty could be placed, what is the origin of the puberty. So if it is central, then both the testicles are enlarged, meaning there is a lot amount of FSH and LH that is acting, and that's why both the testicles are enlarged. On the other hand, if it is peripheral because she has puberty, then there is no LH and FSH, and so the testicular size on both sides is small. It's equivocal when it is HCG dependent. And in terms of testicular tumor, depending on which side the tumor is, one of them is big and the other one is small. So the important message is definitely have an orchidometer and then measure testicular volumes. Next slide, please. So we're just going to work ahead. So we have to confirm the precocity, and for that we would definitely need gonadotropins here. And so looking at the LH, that is definitely a little bit high, and FSH is also high, with a very high testicular uh, testosterone value of 80 nanograms per dl. So all these actually are pointing towards the central precocious puberty. So we need to go and do imaging of the brain in terms of an MRI head, which is actually showing a hamartoma, and that was the reason for this child's Central precocious puberty. Now, would you like to do a surgery for the hematoma? The neurosurgeons have advised surgery, Dr. Meena. I think it depends on how big or small the hematoma is. If it is only very small, then we can actually get away with GNRH analogs and trying to stop central precocious puberty. So, once you have found this, you would closely liaise with the neurosurgeons and continue to monitor his puberty, start treatment, and continue to monitor with the neurosurgeons as well. So all of this should happen hand in hand and so that we are not missing anything sinister in this particular child. As I already mentioned, puberty always goes with the word progression. Anurag, I, need to, uh, I wanted to add a couple of points to the child with the vaginal bleeding you were mentioning. Along yeah. with the investigations, I would always do a clotting to find out whether you are not missing any bleeding problems which is presenting as a vaginal bleed. And with the current scenario, don't actually uh, forget about 
sexual abuse look for uh, during the thorough clinical and the clinical examination look for any bruises any slaps anywhere or any bruising around the vaginal area or any other you know white particles or seminal particles anything on that area these are two very important things if we miss then that's the end of the story so we shouldn't afford to miss those two important differential diagnoses in a child who presents with vaginal bleed thank you so trauma tumor abuse is what uh, what you think and we always talk about that in that regard so this is clearly a case of central precocious puberty so if you have increased testicular volume think of central precocious puberty we do mri in all everybody and one more point is uh, pathology puberty is the early it's always pathological in boys and physiological in girls and if puberty is delayed it's mostly physiological in boys and pathological in girls okay. very important so here we have you. a 7 year old boy with early puberty now this is different from the previous child as we can see here there is marked development of the penile length as well as girth and also there is pubic hair development and this is more than what the testicular volume appears so sir how would we proceed with this child okay this okay you can just concentrate on the child's Uh, genitalia uh, this child is having precocious puberty and you can see that both the length and the width of the penis is in, uh, increased so ch- definitely this child is having a penile enlargement then next thing is you can see that there is pubic hair is there that indicate that child has gone to puberty at least pubic hairs you can they are visible and next important i have to get is his testicular volume if the testicular volume cor- is 3 ml or less than 3 ml child is having a peri- that is as simple as like this child may be having child is having peripheral precocious puberty and most important thing may be cah and if the testicular size is increased child is having a central precocious puberty and if the testicular testicular size one side is big and other side is normal we may be dealing with the local cause like a tumor in that testis so, so i think the testicular volume, volume is normal testicular volume was around 2 ml Pre-pure. 2 ml testicular volume okay 2 ml means that child is child is having a peripheral we have to think of some peripheral cause because there is no uh, testicular volume enlargement and the next important thing we have to do is gonadotropin measurement and you can see that lh is 0.1 so that indicate that is pre pubertal fsh is also normal limit testosterone level is increased so the testosterone is uh, the androgens are coming from peripheral sources and most important thing is adrenal so you can just see the adrenal imaging and you can look up uh, among the commonest cause is uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia 21 hydroxylase deficiency so that we have to start investigating that first and here you can see that the enlargement of the adrenal glands and the 17 hydroxy progesterone level is there any value yeah it was 120 Uh, so savinin hydroxy progesterone is very high that that diagnoses the case the child is having a cah and most probably may not be having a severe salt wasting because child may be symptomatic from the infancy onwards but it may be having a late onset or non salt salt losing type so we have to investigate and manage with hydrocortisone and fluorocortisone and all these things so this is a case of peripheral precocious puberty and commonest is congenital adrenal hyperplasia so the key key message so is, the message is yes, so whenever a child comes to you with precocious puberty uh, there will be some cause so as uh, doc, uh, dr meena was discussing yes, central precocious puberty 75% or more than that there may be a cause so always mri is a must if you come with a peripheral precocious puberty if there is a small testicular volume we are dealing with a case of peripheral precocious puberty of which commonest is where ch here savinin hydroxy progesterone is the vital in- investigation of choice and management accordingly thank you very much so here we have a 13 year old girl who came with a concern of delayed puberty now she was a breast staging one pubic hair staging one her height was 145 cm weight was 40 kg lh was 0.1 fsh was 0.1 and the ultrasound showed absent uterus So, ma'am, should we be worried with this low LH FSH report and a report of absent uterus? Um, basically, at a 13 years is a little borderline for to be investigated for delayed puberty. 
uh, it's just a cut off um, basically uh, not having breast so uh, it just means that the estrogen is not present in the body and since the breast has not started developing it's very common that the uterus will also be very prepubertal and small and if a ultrasound not done carefully many times a report of um, a devastating report of absent uterus can come so i would not want to basically investigate get an ultrasound done if there is uh, basically no breast um plus this is a borderline age so we cannot say that this is de uh, delayed puberty yes we need to keep this girl in follow up and uh, see whether she is entering into puberty or not uh, so uterus can definitely be missed in girls if there is no breast development because a prepubertal uterus is very small uh, and sometimes can be missed if especially in obese girls it can be missed thank you so here we have a 16 year old girl who came with delayed puberty again here the breast staging was one pubic hair staging was one her height was 135 cm weight was 28 kg here we see that the lh was 0.2 and the fs is 1.1 and she was advised easter devil without doing any other investigation so sir should we look in further into this case or should we just start easter devil in this patient this girl of 16 year present with delayed puberty with smr stage of 1 with significantly compromised height as well as weight looking towards significantly compromised height and weight i would like to assess this child for positive any positive sign on systemic examination as well as i would like to do screening test in form of cbc sgbt serum protein urea creatinine electrolyte and ttg looking towards significantly compromised low weight i would like to do first ttg in this case rather uh, for evaluating other endocrine disorder yes so, so anemia is there so uh, strongly i would like to do first ttg in this case rather than other investigation so for the evaluation it was found that this girl had anemia and it was also found that this girl had clubbing and the ttg came very high so sir what would we do now so i would uh, prescribe gluten free diet along with uh, nutritional supplement and this will take care of this delayed puberty So this is a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism due to systemic disorder rather than uh, hypothalamic pituitary disorder. Yes. So always consider systemic causes with low LH and anemia associated anemia suggests the nutritional cause in form of celiac disease or uh, any other uh, nutritional disorder. Thank you very much. So we had this uh, interesting case of a twelve-year-old girl who presented with growth failure. her height was 122 cm weight was 27 kg she did not have any breast development or pubic hair or any menses she had characteristic features of brachymetacarpia webbing of neck now as we expected her fsh was highly uh, i mean it was 88 but she was advised gh by some other uh, practitioner so uh, ma'am how would we further uh, process this case okay as i mentioned before we would start off with the plotting her height and weight on the growth chart and then evaluate her for her growth and puberty we know that she has got a very delayed bone age uh, and also height age and weight age um she is still not got into puberty no signs of puberty especially breast enlargement given that she is 12 years of age she has got some dysmorphic features like webbing brachy brachy metacarpia she has got uh, epiphyseal widening over there and her fsh is very high so which means we definitely have to do a karyotype here so delayed puberty short stature pubertal age definitely do a karyotype and uh, she also was noticed to have an abdominal lump when she had a general examination done and it came across as a mosaic turnus which is very important which can um, give some sort of uh, preemption into how she is going to um, respond to the treatment but also she can have high risk of malignancy given that she is a mosaic turnus so the take home message here is delayed puberty short stature high fsh always think of turner syndrome and if they have got an abdominal lump along with mosaic turnus then there is a high chance that they can have some sort of malignancy and always turner's children children are also uh, predisposed to a high chance of malignancy so we just need to keep those three points in mind 16 year old girl with primary amenorrhea 
with uh, breast staging for pubic hair stage 1 without any men, uh, menstruation uh, yeah so uh, so here we have a girl who has come with primary amenorrhea but she has breast development all we can see is she's not attained menarche till now so this is important and also one important thing is there is no pubic hair uh, development there is only breast development without pubic hair development her height is around 63 cm weight is 52 kg here we see that the FSH is highly raised at 88, the LH is also raised at 45, but the Easter devil is low. And as uh, we would see, there is no hirsutism, so we have ruled out any sort of increased adrenal uh, activity. So, sir, how would we proceed with this uh, patient? So, this child, this child is having, they have come for primary amenorrhea. And the uh, very interesting thing is her height is normal and her breast is well advanced but she has not developed any pubic hair that is the catching point in this case and she has not attained menarche and just by looking at the fsh lh and easter diode she is having hypergonadotropic hypogonadism so there is some problem there only in the at the level of uterus or ovaries and all because we are not dealing with the central cause and interestingly she doesn't have hirsutism also i think at this juncture i think if an abdominal ultrasound may be of help whether what is what is what is what is her internal internal sexual organs whether child is has developed uterus whether she is having ovary and all these things sometimes uh, surprisingly you may not see uterus and ovaries at all in this child because this child is having very uh, very good breast development there is no pre, uh, free pubic hair development you may be dealing with a case of androgen insensitivity syndrome or things like that we have to be very careful in this group of children the key message is here pubarchy is a vital clue here there is no pubarchy and since the child is having a advanced breast stage and absent pubarchy you have to investigate in favor of androgen things like androgen insensitivity syndrome like that that is I think the big the big message is dr yutika and dr vijay has said always look at pubic hair and breast development to find the clue in that regard sir so uh, and i would like to just mention one more point yes. like this this child with androgen, uh, um, androgen insensitivity syndrome and a karyotype of XY is actually having a normal testes producing testosterone which is getting converted into estrogen and that's why she is attained puberty that does, not, does not have the uterus. Now in her case and if you compare it with the case of the girl with Turner syndrome and a Y line, uh, this girl has a lower chance of developing, um, uh, 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 you know, abdominal masses and going into dysgerminomas. Uh, that's because this uh, this uh, gonad is a normal gonad. So generally, in a case of testicular, testicular feminization, we generally do not recommend doing a gonadectomy till the full puberty has been attained. But in a girl with Turner's syndrome, if there is a Y line, we would not want to wait for an abdominal mass to develop, but do a prophylactic gonadectomy uh, to prevent development of gonadoblastomas. So that's that's the point. Having a Y line. Um, Thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah. So a 14-year-old girl came with the problem of her citizen. Now she had attained Minal one year back, and now she was having periods every two months. The ferrimen gallus score was 6, which is less, and the ultrasound showed PCO appearance. And this is the ultrasound report, and she was labeled as a PCOP patient. So, ma'am, this is, was this the correct uh, decision to do? Now, um, the ultrasound diagnosis of polycystic ovarian morphology is a very gray area because it's uh, actually one. Uh, very difficult to differentiate a multicystic ovary from a polycystic ovary. And here in the first few years of Minaki, um, it is a mildly hyperandrogenic state where you ha will have irregular periods, where you will have mild uh, features of hirsutism and acne and, you know, clinical features of hyperandrogenism. Therefore, for the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome in young girls, um, uh, we have completely done away with the uh, polycystic ovarian morphology uh, as one of the key features of diagnosis and the girl needs to have 
डिमॉन्स्ट्रेबल एलिवेटेड टेस्टोस्ट्रॉन और मॉडरेट टू सिवियर हेस्टोटिज्म और सिवियर रिफ्रैक्टरी एक्ने बिफोर यू कैन लेबल दैट दिस इज हाइपर एंड्रोजेनिज्म एंड द क्रॉनिक एन्यूबुलेटरी फेज हैज टू बी प्रोलॉन्ग एंड परसिस्टेंट सो इट हैज टू बी एज स्पेसिफिक वी जनरली डोंट वॉन्ट टू बेसिकली कॉल दिस एनोबुलेशन द फर्स्ट फ्यू इयर्स ऑफ मीनाकी सो इट हैज टू बी एटलीस्ट वन टू टू इयर्स ऑफ इरेगुलर पीरियड्स बिफोर वी कैन यू नो हैव अ फुल क्लिनिकल पिक्चर्स ऑफ पॉलिसिस्टिक वेरियंट syndrome and uh, till then we call them that they are at risk of pcos development and usually many of these girls actually grow out of it so not not right to uh, label them as pcos in this case so the key message would be that to not to investigate uh, girls within the first 2 years of uh, menarche if unless there are severe features of hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovarian morphology is a common common feature in those young girls uh, and it uh, should not be uh, taken at face value as a diagnosis of pcos itself thank you very much so we have a case here of a 16 year old boy who came with issue of pubertal concern now according to the we the onset started at 13 years but then it stopped for 2 years the testicular volume was 3 ml and the testis was soft with pubic hair development stage 3 uh, Height was okay at one seventy centimeters, and this child was diagnosed as CDGB. So, sir, was this a correct diagnosis based on uh, the clinical picture? Yeah, this child, this child, uh, you can tell that child is having delayed puberty if he is thirteen years in fourteen uh, years in boy. But here, at the onset of thirteen years, the child had a normal testicular volume. then that stopped for 2 years that is the classical example of stalled puberty so now this child is having a stalled puberty so it just progressed but then it it stopped growing that is the classical example of stalled puberty so here the whenever a child is having a normal growth and puberty little bit advanced puberty and the testicular volume was not increasing that are the point point is against Uh, diagnosing a constitutional delay in growth and puberty the normal growth and the puberty they have the neurological features also so on imaging we saw that there was a mass in the, the neuro imaging yeah. because this is not cdgp also because there, there was a pubic hair development also sir as well yeah which went uh, sort of against the diagnosis of cdgp okay so i think the big message is that although cdgp is so common in boys If you actually have a stall development, normal growth, you be careful. They will go against CDGP, as Dr. Vijay has really pointed out. I think this is the penultimate uh, case. So, 17-year-old boy where uh, we were still concerned. The onset was at 12 years. Now stopped for three years. The testis was 2 mm, and important is the testis was firm, and this was also associated with gynecomastia in this patient. So, uh, so ma'am, uh, based on the clinical features, how do we proceed? Yeah. So the important features here is he started off with normal puberty, but then his testicular volume did not progress, even the way that he was progressing through puberty. So that was stop. And not only that, his testicles were firm rather than soft. Another interesting finding here is the gynecomastia, which means all the testosterone are being converted into estrogen, and that's why he is getting the breast development. So proceeding on with the screening test and looking at the gonadotropins. you would look at all the screening tests like full blood count alt creatinine ttg fp4 thyroid and electrolytes and uh, you would then find out whether he's got a high testosterone what is high dhts so can we have the next slide please yeah so looking at the gonadotropins you know that his lh was high his fsh was very high and his testosterone was also 40 so then you would worry as to why is not developing his puberty is not progressing in terms of having a high fsh then you would then go on to proceed and do a karyotype because he's got a stalled puberty and his fsh is high and then can have yeah and his karyotype came back as 47 xxy which means that extra x chromosome stopped his testosterone to progress in the same level and that was the reason why it was converted into estrogen and he was developing gynecomastia but he was not developing into puberty next slide so the key messages here are if there is a high fsh and if there is a stall puberty then think of karyotype as to find out why he is not progressing through normal puberty so that is the main important clue here 
Aradhana is asking about how can we differentiate between accelerated hierarchy and central precaution security. Now, both of them are spectrum of the same disorders. So, if your hierarchy is accelerating, it is likely that you're going to progress into central precaution security. So, the message is whether it is slowly progressive or rapidly progressive. If the high standard deviation score for bone age is less than minus two, the bone age chronological age difference is more than two, I would be more concerned in that regards. Dr. Vaijna Dobal is asking, what do we do without axillary hair growth in a six-year-old girl? I think the approach would be the same as a precautious pubarchy, and you have to assess for adenarchy and the parameters. Dr. Pinky is asking about advanced bone age beyond what number of years compared to chronological years? Yes, two years or more. And I would say use another parameter which our growth interpreter gives, which is height standard deviation for bone age. If your height standard for bone deviation for bone age is less than minus two, you have to worry about it. Dr. Srinivas is asking about age-related LHFSS testosterone estrogen levels. This is available through our website. Usually, LH less than 0.1 is prepubertal, more than 0.3 is pubertal. Now, testicular volume correctly, Dr. Satish from AIMS Patna, you have to use an orchidometer. That's the ideal method. Dr. Rashim Agarwal is uh, recommending asking about basal insulin while child is being treated for DKA before stopping. Definitely, yes. So, one dose 12 hours prior would be what we'll be recommending in that regards. And Dr. Bar. Vithalani is again asking what management guidelines for delayed puberty in thalassemia major. Now, in this situation, it's basically a combination of testicular as well as pituitary problems. You start treatment at the right age, maybe 12 to 13 years of age, and then you gradually start increasing the dose over a two-year period. This is what we are going to do in that situation. So I think... Uh,